Okay, so we are going to look at another problem, uh, example for conservation of energy. This one's a little more complicated, and examine it with relationship to other things we've already learned about. This is problem number four in your discussion section materials. It says a skier starts from rest at the top of the hill. The skier coasts down the hill up a second hill, as the drawing illustrates that, and I'll put that up there. The crest of the second hill is circular with a radius of 36 meters. Neglect friction and air resistance, so we're looking at an isolated system, so we're going to look at that conservation of mechanical energy in that isolated system. What must the height of the first be of the first hill so that the skier just loses contact with the snow at the second hill? So here we have our skier, and let's say this is our second hill. It's telling us this hill has a radius equal to 36 meters. And what we want to happen is the skier to just lose contact. Loose, just loose it. And it wants to know the height of the first hill, this height h, in order for the skier to do that. Now it tells us that the, um, he starts from rest. So the uh, velocity or the speed at this point is zero meters per second. All right, so we have a circle here, so that might give us a clue that maybe there's some circular motion that's happening in here. This isn't a grand picture, so this is, there's our perception that that height is above that second hill. Okay, so if we recognize energy, this might make the problem go a little bit smoother. So let's look at that energy idea and identify when we start to care and when we end to care in terms of the energy relationship. We're interested in him finishing over here. So at the crest of hill two is where we stop caring. Because we want this height, we are interested in him starting at the top of hill one. So our total energy initial has to equal our total final energy. Our initial energy is going to be our initial kinetic plus our initial potential, and that has to equal our final kinetic plus our final potential. Our kinetic, of course, is one half the mass times the initial speed squared plus the mass times the gravity times the height plus one half the mass times the final speed squared plus the mass times the gravity times the height. Now, because we're dealing with a height, we also have to define our height equal to zero. And I neglected to do that at the onset. We're starting above this point. We're interested in this height. So let's make our reference point that crest of the hill. So, whoops, I forgot a final here. So there are a couple of things we can look at in this relationship to simplify it if we understand the idea of what these energies are. Kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy, well, it's not moving at the beginning. So there is no energy to begin with for kinetic energy. All of the energy of the skiers is in his potential energy. Similarly, at the end where we care about, the height is equal to zero, so there is no energy potential energy because he's at the zero level. So that's our reference point of potential energy. So this reduces mathematically to mgh equals one, and physically, one half mv final squared. And this is an initial height. All right, well let's simplify. We're interested in that height, that initial height. So if I divide both sides by mg, I end up with one half m, the final speed squared divided by mg. My m's will cancel out, and I'm left with one half v final squared over g. So we can just make that look a little better there. So that's my relationship for the height. Well, g's a constant. I know that. I need my final velocity. Well, that's the velocity at the hill, and I'm not given it, but I am told that the skier just loses contact with the hill. Well, during this motion, I need this speed. During this motion, that skier is in uniform circular motion as it goes over this hill. So if we were to look at the forces acting on that object, we have the force of gravity. 
And normally we would have a normal force acting upward. But it says he just loses contact. So there is no contact, which means right at that tippy top point where he's just losing contact, we don't have a normal force. So the only forces acting on that object are the force of gravity. Well, that's in the vertical domain. We don't have anything horizontally. So we have minus mg, and because he's in circular motion, the sum of the vertical forces are equal to the mass times the speed squared over the radius, the speed that I'm interested in. So if I look at my force relationship, I find that minus mg equals mv squared over r. Well, simplifying, I was interested in v squared. So simplifying this relationship, solving for v, I, my two m's are going to cancel out. I bring r over to the other side, and oh, I have a negative. Well, let's just do it first. Minus g times r is equal to v squared. Now, if I'm going to take the square root, I have a problem with this negative. So we have to recognize what I missed in the process. Well, this sum is in, is the direction of the net force. It's in the negative direction. My net force is in the downward direction. So this side should have also been negative. We recognize the acceleration is negative. This force and this force are the same. The force of gravity is equal to the circular force, centripetal force. So they have to be in the same direction. So if my negative ends up in there, which I missed, then those negatives cancel. And V is equal to the square root of G times R. So our, our speed, 9.8, times the radius of 36. Take the square root of that. And we get a speed of 18. 0.8 meters per second. That then we can use in our Hill experiment, our, our energy, and we have 18.8 .8 squared over 2 times 9.8. So I square that, and divide it by 2, divide it by 9.8, and we get 18 meters. So recognizing that we have an energy situation, what do we need from that energy situation? Well, we need a speed, a final speed. And then recognizing, okay, well, this is in circular motion. And if I'm just leaving, I only have one force that accounts for that circular motion, that circular motion at acceleration. Net force is in the downward direction. So keeping in mind that negative, find the speed that the object would have to be going in that circle to lose contact with the road and using that speed in my relationship. All right, good job.